My talk is really around um, demystifying Microsoft Graph Connectors. And uh, first question you got to ask is, well, you know, what is Graph Connectors and do we really need to demystify it? Um, this is all around Copilot extensibility and Graph Connectors is just one. Is that flickering? That is flickering. Um, it's just one, one way of doing um, extensibility around um, Microsoft 365 um, Copilot. So we're going to talk about what it is, um, how, how does Copilot leverage Graph Connectors. I'll, do, I'll show a brief demo of this. So Graph Connectors um, are not new. That's the first thing in terms of that, what the demystification is, right? So it's not something that is new. This is something that's already been out there. And um, you may already be using this and you don't even know. You may actually just be doing searches inside of um, SharePoint or doing a search inside um, portal.office.com and getting results back. And you may see it in a different vertical or you may see a, a little weird little icon off to, off to the left. Um, you know, it could potentially be graph connectors. And most places, um, you know, if you have wikis um, on site, this is one good way of serving up wikis. I know that's what we do, at, especially at Microsoft, in terms of like providing content to people um, you know, when, they're at, when they're doing searches. The key differentiator is that you know, we're, we're, it's just evolved to now be part of a co-pilot experience. So the way to think about it is that um, you may have um, data. Um, well, no one's building everything that they do at work in one silo. It's usually distributed across some ERP system, some, you know, maybe your own bespoke, um, you know, LOB system, you know, a couple of different things. So the idea is that you want to ensure that your customers are not context switching as much, not going to this for that or going for something else or something else. And also you want to tell a story that's very cohesive. So, um, you know, you don't want to basically, uh, if, you're, if you're trying to author something for a prospect, a client, you know, a coworker, you don't have to be going to several different places and then copy and pasting things into one. So the idea is ingest all of that information into M365, Microsoft 365, and then that data actually becomes a, you know, a first party citizen alongside the other data that's in M365. And um, you, know, you may ask, well, how do you do that? Um, we, we, a couple of slides down, we'll talk about it. But the benefit here, pre copilot or pre LLMs, is that this was using largely what's known as a lexical kind of query. So you have to either know the title or know something about it, something that you know we can either pick up from the metadata or something that is in the file name or in the title, because that's the only way that you can search for it. The benefit of having something that is um, using LLMs, um, large language models, is that you can now use cosine similarity and nearest neighbors. So now you have the semantic index that's going to reason over this data and then put it in, in, in context that you can actually get, get, get information that is more relevant for what you're doing in that moment. So on the existing experiences, this is what I spoke about before. If you go to like you know portaloffice.com, you know the Microsoft 365 app, or if you go to search inside SharePoint, or even in Context IQ and Preview, you're able to use graph connectors already. The key difference now is the fact that that now becomes something inside um, Copilot Studio. Some uh, Copilot, ah, oh, so cool. As uh, everyone's talking about it, anyway. One of the things that Duane talked about, um, and uh, he was giving a great example, is this visual that's actually on the left in terms of what extensibility looks like. For the purposes of our conversation here, we're going to be talking about graph connectors. So we're on the x-axis, the one that's going out to the, to the right. And it's all really around organizational content. Um, the other, and I'll talk about this really, really tiny on, on the y-axis or about user skills, is basically talking about plugins. Um, but it's for a topic for a different conversation. But the idea here is that you can do a lot already with Copilot for Microsoft 365, either on the x-axis or on the y-axis, with either Microsoft Graph, leveraging Microsoft Graph or leveraging plugins inside of, um, you know, maybe possibly Teams. But you can now build and extend that out further to the right by creating your own graph connectors and build your own custom plugins on the y-axis as well. And what this gives you is it's more context around your data. Um, you know, b going beyond keyword search and retrieval, doing summarization, doing ranking, um, and also you get all of the benefits of the responsible AI that Microsoft provides as well. So, if you took at it, uh, look at it in, in, in a nutshell, what we're doing is nothing, nothing, you know, weird. You know, it's basically leveraging the foundational models that are already there, so that you can do your chat completions, so that you can do your summarizations and stuff like that. What we're doing now is artfully um, grounding that data around Microsoft 365. And then having your in-app experiences, you know, to create a, a co-pilot story. If you want to think about it from a tech stack um, and, and, and know where your entry points are for, for your own purposes as you create your own solutions and experiences, you know, everything starts in, in Azure, which is where your AI infrastructure is. Your foundational model is the next layer up. 
you have your Microsoft Graph Connection. So this is a very low level. And this is important distinction because you notice a few levels up, you see plugins. So at the very, very lowest level is Graph Connectors. A key thing, I'm not going to steal the thunder of some of my teammates that's going to be doing a deep dive here, is that information coming in with Graph Connectors are, is typically something that you're going to have indexed and it's going to be available. Whereas if you look at something for plugins, it is something that is just in time. You know, go out and do this. Go in and take an action on that. So that's one key differentiator. But the fact that it's so low level, it means that you have a grounding that's done. You have prompts that, and meta prompts that are also created from what the user input is plus your system prompts and to be able to surface in the, in the higher level apps. As I mentioned before, um, actually going on right now and maybe even half an hour from when we end at the top of the hour, Cameron and Jason, so Cameron and Jeremy are doing a session around Copilot 101, talking a little bit about the top layer, the top, the top of the stack. Um, tomorrow, I believe it's tomorrow. Yeah, Glad, um, Brian and Gladys actually do a deep, deep dive into what we're talking about here in terms of graph connectors, and they'll talk to you about out of the, whether it's out of the box connectors, which is we, we do have that Microsoft publishes, or also connectors that you can build yourself, and the ones that you can get um, out of the portal. And um, math. Eunice and myself are going to be talking about plugins also tomorrow, um, which is the other extensibility mo model option. I'm, or my, I'm very close to time. So I want to do some, um, some, some, uh, some demos and show it to you. So I'm just going to push it a little bit. Um, the, the building blocks of creating graph connectors is really, really simple. Part of the demystification, right? It's really three endpoints that you're going after. One to create the connection, one to create the schema, and one to really manage the permission, manage board, which is part of the, what's known as the external item. It, um, one of the things I mentioned before in, in terms of saying that, you know, you're going to bring your system in, which it could be bespoke, it could be an ERP that is, you know, relatively known. But the key things are that you're going to define what those fields are inside of those systems, and they may not be the same thing that we define inside of M365. So there is a mapping that you're creating. That's what the schema does. But beyond that, you also have control around um, that experience. You, may, you can define what you want to be searchable, what you want to be refinable, what you want to also be returnable. So you can basically have fields that no one can search on, but when, but when they query on something, it can return that information. So you really have a, re, a, a really good way of, of, of creating that experience that's tailored for exactly what your audience will need. Um, this is also part of how semantic labels come in because um, the LLM also needs to understand, okay, well, Imagine you dump a bunch of stuff inside M365. It, 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 really, it really would not be performant to reason over everything. So it gives you the ability to say, I want to label these particular items, and these are the things I want basically the LLM to, to, to look across. And we call that basically your semantic labels. A question that you might have is, well, okay, I ingest all of this stuff in. It could become stale. What do I do? One, you could basically have scheduled pulls where you actually pull, you know, do a batch job and it, it, it does it daily. If, if, if the information is not transactional and it is something that you know, you know, it, it's good to have it maybe a day behind. Um, or it could be event-based. And uh, there's a lift here that you would have to do basically in creating a, a middleware piece that would basically listen to the source system, see changes, and then send it back. And this is now item by item. But this becomes available as a part of the index as soon as it comes across the wire. What does that look like? Um, let me come over here and go to a chat real quickly. And I'm doing, I'm going to do a new chat here and I'm going to grab, uh, let's grab. Yeah, let's grab this one. Um, does that say low much? It should say how much. It's a typo. All right. Let's go ahead and do this right here. And to put my H back inside here. How much um, can I expense for food? Because as Vesa mentioned, I'll be in Wiesbaden in two weeks with Vesa. And um, we're going to be at this conference. So I want to know, how do I manage food while I'm in Germany? So this is actually, um, I didn't ask it for any, I didn't give it too much information, just the fact that I'm not going to be in America. <laughs> and let's see what it comes back like. And come on, internet, come on, internet, come on, internet. There you go, there you go. Hope it doesn't come back and say I'm sorry, though. Because that's the other option that can happen, right? Oh, and it certainly did. This worked. You actually saw me see this worked a while ago. Oh my gosh. All right. Anyway, um, this is the thing with Copilot, man. Come on, let's grab this one. Control C and come on here. And then we won't fight it too much um, because you can actually go to the other sessions where you know, you'll see more and you'll have more time than me trying to do this in 15 minutes. But if this is what comes back with, coming through emails. Oh, oh, look at that, actually. So actually, I was expecting it not to do something with Gladys, but actually bring back something from ServiceNow. Um, but it's probably found something from here. 
um, tell me about travel. One last one. And then, you know, I'll, I'll break for questions because I know Vesa also needs to wrap up. I'm just trying to see if it's going to come back and give me a bunch of stuff. It's doing emails. That's so weird. All right. Anyway, but um, you can all, part of what I talked about before is, is here where I can actually do travel policy and you can actually see coming back with information here from both service now as well. And as I mentioned before, these, there could be a bunch of different connectors. You can see some here for SharePoint, for Power BI, for Confluence, for Jira, for Salesforce, for, um, for, for service now and, and others. And um, you can also create your own. But with that, I'm going to stop right here because I think I'm actually over time and I'll field any questions that you may have. Thank you.